Well, hello, friends. Um, today, I'm going to implement list marker um, layout in the um, libHTML. So I was just reading the CSS2 spec here because I don't know why, I just like it. I find it very readable. Um, and I know it's not entirely up to date, but it's just, who cares? So it was talking about how um, elements with the display list item should generate a principal block box for the element's content. And then um, depending on the list style, uh, possibly also a marker box. So what that means basically is that for, um, I mean, let's go to CERNDOS.org. So um, in this case, this here is the principal block box of the um, element. And then here is the marker box, which is um, like a separate layout box placed to the left of the principal block box. So currently the way that this that list items are implemented in the Serenity uh, browser is that, um, Oh, wait, what am I trying to do? Uh, display block, list item is what I was looking for. Uh, in layout block, um, we can see here when we render a layout block, we check if the style um, has display uh, list item. This is the default value if there is no display value. So if, uh, if display is list item, then we just make a bullet rect, which is like a little bit to the left of the um, the block box, and then we just hard code filling in a rectangle there. So what we should be doing instead is, um, or actually, let me show you one more thing. So in, in the element, DOM element here, um, where we ask an element to create a layout node for itself, um, we, we create the layout nodes based on the display property. So if there is no display, if the display is none, then we don't create a layout node because that DOM node is not going to have any layout. But if it's block or list item, we create a layout block. And what we should do now is instead of creating a layout block here, we're going to create a uh, special thing, like a dedicated thing that we'll call like, um, I don't know, layout list item probably. So layout list item. And text this and the style. Okay, then we have to actually invent that thing. So what layout list item is going to do is that it's going to um, this is going to be the layout list item here, like the principal block box. Um, the principal box for something is like um, that's the that's the primary um, layout box that's generated by a DOM element. And then um, it can have additional boxes that are not the principal boxes, and they are anonymous boxes, which means that they don't directly correspond to the um, node. So in, in, um, in our layout tree, that just means that they have a null node pointer, uh, but they're still in the layout tree, so they have a parent. Anyway, uh, all right, this doesn't exist, so we have to create it. Uh, they have this item HCPP, and let's also make a separate class for the marker. So we'll call that layout list item marker. And layout, I don't know. I'm just going to edit the make file here right quick. Oh. Uh, list item and list item marker. Okay. Let me refresh my cube creator. And there we go. So here, um, let's see, how are we going to do this? So let me write this class out. It will be, um, it's going to inherit. So the list item, that is this, this thing right here. So it's a block. Layout block. Um, layout list item final public layout block. Um, and it will have a corresponding DOM element and it will have a um, style, set of style properties that apply to this list item. Okay. And we'll also do a destructor. 
And then we are going to need to do some custom layouts. So we have to override the layout uh, function. Um, and then we'll also um, do a class name override where we just turn layout list item. So this, this makes it look uh, right if I do like a layout tree dump, for instance. Okay, um, I think that's good. And then let's also write out the marker class. So the marker is not going to be a block because it will never have children. So it doesn't need any, it doesn't need to be able to um, do any kind of inline layout or anything like that. And in fact, it's just going to be like a dumb little box that we place to the left of our principal box and uh, draw something in it. And I think we're even just going to draw a little rectangle. Um, so for something like that, we can just inherit from layout node, it's like the simplest kind of node. Um, list item marker, public layout node. And these are always going to be anonymous and they're never going to have style. So the constructor can just be like this. Uh -huh. And then really the thing that we need to care about here is overriding the render function so that we draw it correctly. And then of course also the um, class name once again. Okay, I think that's good. So now that I wrote that out, I realized that in the list item class, I'm probably going to want to have a pointer to our marker. So every list item is going to have a pointer to its marker um, layout node. So we'll put that in a ref footer to a layout list item marker uh, class layout list item marker. Okay. Cool, um, and then I guess we can try to implement this. So, this item, and that takes an element and a null and null ref footer to a style properties. And then we're just gonna pass those to our parent class. Easy enough. And why does this not work? Oh, shit, is it because we don't have the definition of the element? That's probably why. Parameter style is Wait, why am I so blind? Oh, shit. It's because the layout block takes a pointer. So the reason that layout block takes a node star instead of a node ampersand is because layout block um, can have can be anonymous, which means that it can have um, it can have it can uh, represent an anonymous block, which is a block that is not one to one mapping with a DOM node. So anyway, in our case here, layout list item is never going to be anonymous because a um, list item is always um, refers to a, a layout list item always corresponds to a DOM node that has display list item. So that's why it's in a, we get an element ampersand here. Okay. Um, and then we want to implement layout. Layout. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to do uh, the regular block layout. Um, because it's still a block, so this when this code runs, it will do the regular block layout stuff, compute width, compute position, and then lay out all of our children, and then finally figure out how tall the box should be. Um, but after we're done with that, um, we can make a marker if we need one. So I guess if there's no marker, say M marker is uh, list. Layout list item marker. 
and we actually have to include that. And then um, it's not enough that we just instantiate it, right? Because it's not going to end up in the tree unless we actually put it in the tree. So we have to make it a child of the list item. So we'll just do prepend child marker, and that will put the um, the marker layout node into the layout tree as the first child of the list item node, if that makes sense. Um, yeah. Okay. Because the reason that we want to do that is because um, when we render the layout tree, then we just do a like a tree walk and we visit every node of the tree and we just tell them to render themselves. So this will cause us to visit um, the marker as well, just through the regular tree walk that, that we do for rendering. So um, yeah, that was too optimistic. Um, ba -ba -ba element. Oh, I forgot to save. Undefined reference. Oh shit! I forgot to implement that list item marker. Language to layout list item marker. Very simple class, I think. Uh, now we have to implement render. So. Here we're going to Lipgui Cheap Painter. Um, oh, and we have to actually initialize the base class. So since this one is always anonymous, we can just initialize a layout node with null footer. Um, I think there's no default argument there. Yeah, right. So that's kind of neat. And then in render, we're just going to figure out um, what's the, um, wait, hold on. We, I was thinking we should just um, paint our, into our rect, but we never actually computed the rect for this thing. That's what we have to do here in list item layout. So here we just create the marker and add it as our child, but we never actually place it anywhere. So since we've done our own layout, then Placing it should be as easy as just um, setting a marker rect, which we'll make up here. Um, maybe like, uh, I don't know, our own rect x, rect y. Um, how about 8 by 8 pixels? Something like that. And then here, when we actually render the marker, we can just say um, context painter fill rect my rect color. Um, we're going to get the text color, I think. So we'll use color of fallback CSS property ID color default to, oh, for this document, default to black. Okay, let's see how this goes. <laughs> I'm probably forgetting something, but we'll have a look. Oh, well, so these are the old um, things that we were hard-coded. And then here's the clearly the new markers, kind of looking dumb there because we don't actually move the marker to the left of the principal box, um, but it's a pretty good start, actually, I have to admit. So let's see. Let's just start by um, I guess we can um, we can make the height of the marker rack be the um, height of ourselves and then 
um, here, we'll create a, like a bullet rack that's like um, four by four, and then we'll center that inside our own rect and then draw that okay um and then let's get rid of the this goofy where the hell was that no no this item here this thing the layout block render where we um We do the hard-coded rendering of list item markers. So let's have a look at this. Mm, well, that's not what I was uh, hoping to achieve. So what did I forget this time? Oh, I'm still forgetting to actually move it to the left. <laughs> so let's just do that. And actually, what was the old code even doing? Because it was kind of nicely placed. It's just, it's just totally hacked. So it's x minus 8. Yeah, that's what I was going for too here. Okay, so let's try that. These are just numbers from the, from the place where numbers come from. Um, as my friend Jeff would say. And looky there starting to look a little better maybe we can actually because now we were doing a center within and um, if we do that one if we make it four pixels wide instead then um, we won't we won't skip to the right quite so much um, let's just see how that looks like okay here we go now we're looking real tidy. So actually, I would like to show you the, um, the layout tree here because um, I realized that it can be a bit, probably quite confusing if I keep talking about the layout tree and, and like what it should look like and so on, but I never actually show you any, uh, any kind of dump or visualization of it. Um, it might be a bit hard to follow along. <laughs> so let's see. Um, so here is a layout list item layout um, node entry that corresponds to an li dom node and it has one line box that has this text in it so you recognize that it's this one right here and then you can see that as it the first child of this layout list item is right here the layout list item marker which is anonymous so it has no corresponding dom node and uh, it's placed right here and you can see here also that um, the marker box is actually as tall as the um, principal box, which is essentially like the line height. And uh, then we just center the um, marker within that rect. So that's when we paint. I think that makes sense. So yeah, that's how it looks. And then you can see here that um, so this is the principal box of the li, right? And then he has, um, this is his first child, but then he has a second child, which is the um, anchor element, which becomes a layout inline. And then it has the, um, the actual text inside of it, which is this text right here. So it's a little, sometimes it's a little bit hard to read these uh, dumps because like the, um, the anchor element is down here and then the text node inside it here, but you actually see the text all the way up here because um, the text sort of um, ends up in the um, line boxes of the um, containing layout block. But that's a whole other thing. Anyways, uh, this turned out pretty good and actually I really dislike these because I have to I have to write some code to, to print these as strings because it's like these are the CSS property names right now. Uh, I made them into an enum, that's why they look like this. I, I don't have string uh, prettification, stringification of them yet. But this looks really nice. Let me go to serenityos.org. See? How cool is that? Mm. Oh, did it crash? Shit. 
Well, can't work all the time, right? Anyways, actually, now I just I just want to check that we're not suddenly crashing on the um, on the Happy Birthday web page. So I was so happy that I got that actually working in the browser. Oh, okay, looky there. Cool. So yeah, this is something I, I, I've been wanting to do for quite a while. I just never got around to it because it's this kind of thing, you know, where something kind of looks right and it feels right. It's just you know that um, it's not done in the um, in the way that you would like. So eventually you have to go in and fix it up. So the um, the thing that's that's good about this now is that this will allow us to implement like more stuff like CSS styling of the marker and um, you know, supporting stuff like image markers and whatever. And yeah, it's just nice. Nice to do things. And it's nice to do things sort of kind of the way that um, CSS spec says, even if it's an older CSS spec, I still really like it. Uh, anyways, very cool. Uh, ah, there's so much stuff to do with lists, but at least this uh, brings us one step of the way. So let's add all of these. Maybe, oh, maybe actually we can just do this. Okay, so patch review. Um, here in the element DOM node, um, when we want to create a layout node for an element, we now look for display list item. And if we encounter that, then we make a layout list item instead of just a layout block, which we did before. And that means that layout block render no longer has to do this hackety hack thing where for list item display, he would paint a little bullet. So that's good. And here's the layout list item class, very simple, just a um, layout block that uh, creates a marker box and places it to the left of himself. Um, oh, and by the way, the reason that there's room on our left, let me show you, is right here in the, um, in the default style sheet. Uh, li is display list item by default, and then we just slap a margin left on there, um, which gives us space on the left side for the marker. And this might not be the perfect way of doing this, but it's the way that it works right now. So that's why it works. Um, because if we didn't have this, then the, um, you know, the marker would end up like um, outside of the um, document boundaries or outside of the page. Um, so yeah, what we were doing here, list item, here's just the definition of that, blah, blah, blah. A little marker member here. We could probably live without having a marker member, but I feel like it's useful because we can, like if we relay out, then we know that we don't accidentally create a second marker. Um, and going forward, it will help us um, do things to our marker if we should need to do that. But right now, it's just helping us not create duplicate markers on a repeated layout. Uh, okay, and then Here is the marker implementation. Very, very simple layout node that the only thing it knows how to do is render. So he just grabs his own rect and then puts a little bullet at, in the center within that rect and then fills that in with the text color, basically. Um, and so the weight color or fallback works, by the way, is that so we ask our style, uh, which in our case is going to be the parent style because um, if you are a layout node, an anonymous layout node, then you don't have any of your own style, you just ask your parent. Uh, but that happens automatically in the style function. And then um, it would just check if there is a CSS color property in that style. And if so, it will uh, use whatever that property says, so the text color. Otherwise, it will use this, the fallback value here, the black color. and the reason that we pass the document here is because um, the color can have this special thing um, 
that we use to implement link colors because you want link color you might want link colors to behave a little bit differently if they've been visited before stuff like that and uh, to be able to figure that out um, we just pass the document pointer to the color will fall back and then it's able to ask the document more information about this anyways that's just a <laughs> quick little description of color or fallback um, and then here is the definition of layout list item marker which again very simple class just a simple layout node layout node is just the base unit in the layout tree uh, it's essentially a rectangle somewhere in the tree uh, it does not have style information um, it just has a box and then everyone else inherits from it so everyone has a box right but uh, layout list item marker, not much more than a box, and a render overload or overwrite. Okay, cool. So let me commit this. Um, implement display list item as dedicated, and it's marker bar. Uh, markers as dedicated um, implement, uh, and. and it's marker. Okay. Um, this patch uh, moves the hard coded hack for uh, display list display list item. From the or from layout block and uh, moves uh, now um, oh no, no, no. and uh, adds layout list item and layout list item marker um, a layout list item. Uh, Say elements with the list item. Now generate a layout list item, um, which in turn also, which might then also generate a layout list item marker if appropriate. and a cute smiley face. Okay, very nice. Let's see that one more time. Hmm. Oh, shit. Well, we crashed when we tried to layout. Why is that? Uh, it's a good thing that I tried to resize. Layout list item layout. I tried to lay out my children because they appear to be in line. And why am I failing? Assertion failed. Child is in line. Okay, so what's going on? So we're in layout and we're trying to lay out the list item. Uh, da, 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 here, and then we're calling this. And then we're calling children are in line. Um, which makes us do this. Why do we think that the children are in line? Because we have a first child and the first child is not a block. Oh, ooh, but, um, this, this is not entirely right on so many levels. <laughs> So the first thing is we can just ask here if it's an inline, I think, yeah. And then we can also ask, um, because it, the thing that's happening here is that uh, we're putting this child first by prepending it. So if we are a um, layout list item with inline children, then we don't. We don't want to insert this first because this thing is not in line or a block or anything. It's just a, a stupid layout node. It's just a box. 
and it's not going to participate in block or inline layout. And it's just going to like paint or render. So the easy way to avoid this right now is to just put it at the end because that way that way it won't be the first child and we don't have to deal with um, whether it thinks it's in line or not. Oh, it's still not working. Okay. Um, layout this time. Layout, layout in my children. Oh, oh, God, so stupid. Um, that's that's obviously not the problem. We're just trying to lay out. We're just thinking that all of our children are um, in line. And if we do lay out in line children, and we have a child that's not in line, then we assert. So, hmm, what is the best solution? Hmm. Um, maybe the best solution is to be really cheesy for now and just make it behave like the other children. <laughs> so that would mean that we would like, um, if we had a first child, then marker set in line, first child in line. So the marker will just be in line if if the existing children of the list item are in line, and it will be block or non in line if it's not. So it will just conform. This is it feels very hackish, but it's just a, a way out of this issue right now. Yeah, here we go. Okay, and you can see that. Uh, actually, we can see this kind of nice effect here that um, the list marker ends up in the middle of the. Um, um, when the text wraps and, and like ends up in two lines, then the um, marker is still centered. I kind of like that. Although, is that actually what Firefox would do now? <laughs> I'm kind of curious. Um, no, it would keep it at the top. Dang it. All right. Well, see, I, I was just saying I like this, but I kind of like it. Maybe it's not perfect. Maybe I'll fix that some other time. For now, it'll be centered and we can just live with it. So um, let's do that separately first. Layout, layout block, um, HTML, um, children are in line, should check, should uh, check is in line. Instead of asking if the uh, children inherit the first child inherits from a block, just ask if it's in line. Or we should probably say is a block, just ask if it's in line. Is not. Why is it so hard to type? Ask if it thinks it's in on. Yeah. That just feels more correct. Uh, anyways. I mean, like obviously, I guess I should explain. So we're ask we want to find out if the um, children of this layout block are in line or if they're not in line. So it just feels more correct, right, to check do we have a child at all, and if so, is it in line? Instead of asking like do we have a child and is it not a block, you know, this it just reads so much better. Um, and then here, we just copy the um, inline state. And I probably I don't need to. Well, I can I can keep it appended actually. Okay.
Mm, make sure the marker is the same inline state as siblings. Um, or then for block insert. Oh, I'm trying to add its children since they have uh, inconsistent inline dates. Or let's say flags. Inconsistent inline state, yay. Okay, great. Can we see it one more time now? I'm glad I tried to resize it because um, it's a stupid, stupid bug. All right, that's pretty cool. Man, I'm kind of tired. <laughs> so, anyways, that's going to be it for today's video. So, if you made it this far, then I thank you for watching, for hanging out, and I hope you saw something interesting. And I will see you next time.